Hi everyone. Uh, this week we're going to be uh, talking about the Second Great Awakening, the Prayer Revival, uh, the Holiness Movement, and uh, uh, Charles Finney, and uh, and a host of other people and revival movements that occurred during the 19th century. Um, let's begin by talking about the Second Great Awakening. And uh, one of the best examples of where it started, because some people uh, suggest it really started uh, during the Yale College Revival of 1801, and there were similar, similar revivals on other college campuses around that same time period. But my favorite story actually resides with what's called the Hamden Sydney Revival, College Revival that occurred a decade earlier, which really kind of gives you a glimpse at to where um, where the United States especially had quickly uh, uh, um, dissolved in, uh, in a way, uh, spiritually speaking, into a point of spiritual stagnation. You know, the First Great Awakening was really the foundation, uh, spiritual foundation for the United States um, and also for revival in Europe. But, um, but then uh, there was spiritual stagnation that took place as uh, churches became more institutionalized. And um, but then uh, then something happened at a small college in uh, Longwood, Virginia, called Hamden Sydney College. And um, what happened there was there were five students that wanted to start a prayer meeting. And uh, uh, the, the college students at the college, the majority of them, there were a few hundred students at that time, um, wanted to literally tar and feather these five Christians. Well, the president of the university found out, and he uh, he um, told the student body he was ashamed that uh, here were simply simply five Christians. All they wanted to do was pray. So he, uh, for their protection, he invited them uh, to join him in his office for prayer. Uh, and uh, so he uh, started participating in those prayer meetings himself and became saved. Uh, and then shortly after that, within weeks, um, almost the entire student body uh, joined in this prayer meeting. Uh, and uh, so hundreds of students at Hamden Sydney College came to Christ. Almost the entire student body joined in this daily prayer meeting. Uh, and uh, and from there, uh, revival really began to break out. And um, there was a, a bit of a gap there between what happened next and what is called the 1801, 1801 College Revival. It started at Yale. It, it spread to Princeton University, uh, to Harvard and other, camp and other campuses at that time. Uh, but also right around the right, same time, there was there was an even more significant revival that occurred in uh, in um, the West, in uh, in really what was kind of the new frontier of America, in um, Cane Ridge, Kentucky. And uh, so there, there was uh, there was a group of Christians that started what's called a camp meeting, and that became really kind of a core of a re religious Americana uh, were these religious uh, camp meeting revivals. And, and it was really started at the Cane Ridge Camp Meeting Revival of 1801. It's estimated that 50,000 people came to that camp, camp meeting. It was really in the middle of nowhere, uh, but people came from all over the region. And, um, and um, there was uh, a vibrant worship. There was uh, there was uh, spiritual gifts manifested, uh, speaking in tongues. Uh, they were very charismatic meetings. There were people that barked and shouted and, and uh, all sorts of different vibrant uh, charismatic uh, worship events took place at this meeting. And from it uh, erupted several different Christian movements, especially what something called the restoration, Restorationist Movement, uh, from which... Um, Alexander Stone uh, and uh, and uh, uh, what's called the Stone Campbell movement and um, and uh, uh, several different denominations, uh, Church of Christ uh, and others became uh, originated from that movement. Um, the circuit riders of the Methodist Church began to spread throughout the United States and spread into the frontier areas. Uh, they were very, very effective at planting churches and uh, the circuit riders 
pastored a, a number of different churches. They would ride from one church to the next as they preached from church to church. Uh, but, uh, but the revival didn't just occur in the United States. In uh, around the same time, you had a, something that occurred all the way up in Northern Europe called in Finland called the Awakened Movement of Finland. It was a very charismatic, very um, uh, vibrant, spirit-filled renewal movement that occurred at that time. Uh, there's not as much written about it, unfortunately, right now, but uh, but we're finding out more and more about it and its significance in Northern Europe and laying the foundation for later renewal movements in that region as well. Um, there also, in the midst of this movement, there was a lot of social reform that began to take place at this time. Uh, you had people, uh, significant people like William Wil Wilberforce, Lord Shaftesbury, John Newton, George Mueller, and William Booth who started the Salvation Army. These were all people that were helping the poor, helping to stop slavery in the world. And uh, the one person in particular that should get the most credit for stopping slavery in the world was somebody named William Wilberforce, uh, a, a British parliamentarian, a very devout Christian. In fact, if I hope some of you've had, had the chance to watch the movie uh, titled Amazing Grace. It's about his life story. If you haven't watched it, I encourage you to rent it on Amazon or Hulu and uh, and watch it. Um, it's an amazing story of how he single-handedly began to influence British Parliament to stop the slave trade. And just days uh, uh, after, uh, just days before his death, uh, the Slavery Abolition Act of 1833 ended slavery altogether in in all of the territories of of the United Kingdom. Um, another significant movement that emerged shortly within a, a few decades after the, first, the Second Great Awakening was something called the Holiness Movement. The repercussions of the Holy, Holiness Movement are still felt strongly in the United States and, and especially even more so in other parts of the world today. Um, it, uh, some of the origins of this movement started with somebody named Phoebe Palmer, who began some Tuesday meetings in New York City in 1835. Uh, Charles Finney, we'll talk about him in a minute. Another significant person was Hannah Weidel Smith. And by the way, uh, the, there were a number of significant women involved in this movement. Some of them were not only involved in, in the holiness movement, but they were involved politically in helping bring about women's suffrage, women, uh, women's right to vote. Um, D.L. Moody was involved in this movement. He was really, in essence, the Billy Graham of the 19th century. He was by far the most popular evangelist uh, of the 19th century. Um, he helped popularize the YMCA. And, and of course, um, um, you had um, the formation of the Sal Salvation Army led by General Booth uh, that uh, helped spread that movement that you still see in existence today in front of department stores at Christmas time. Uh, you also had significant groups that came out of the holiness movement like the Nazarene Church, the Church of God, and the Church of Christ. Phoebe Palmer, as I mentioned earlier, was one of the founding members of the holiness movement. Um, she started Tuesday prayer meetings, which became very popular in New York City in 1835. And um, and uh, hundreds of people came. She also taught uh, about the importance of being sanctified through the baptism in the Holy Spirit, which was starting to become a very popular term in, Christ in Protestant Christian circles at that time. Um, she spoke uh, throughout the U.S. in her periodical, uh, The Guide to Holiness, at one point had a circulation of, uh, of 30,000. Um, also, after the holiness movement, a very, very popular uh, and enormously influential revival occurred called the Prayer Revival of 1857. And um, it began with a, a lay evangelist, just an ordinary layman named Jeremiah Lamphere, who started a prayer meeting in which only six people showed up when he first started it in the fall of uh, 1857. Uh, we'll uh, start the second part of this lecture in just a minute.